Protobuf is a fantastic tool. It reduces the time to write serialization logic, reduces bugs, and gives very well optimized formats to store the data in. But it has a very nasty footgun. Required field. <laughs> Your normal proto definition file might look like this. Optional string ID, optional string name, optional int 32 age. But ID is always going to be set, right? So it's reasonable to make it a required field, right? Well, let's do it. Afterwards, if we attempt to serialize a proto when ID is not set, it will fail. If we attempt to parse a proto where the field does not exist, the parse will also fail. Sounds reasonable enough. Well, now, say we want to change our ID field to the required int64 much better ID. Therefore, we of course modify our schema, rebuild the binaries and push it to our system. First, we start writing data with this much better ID set and it all works fine. Then, we try to read our data and everything stops working. We're getting strange protobuf parsing errors and it takes us several hours to realize it's because much better ID is not set in the old data. Meaning we must repair our system. We reset our binary to the previous one. Again, it doesn't work. The new data doesn't have ID set because we stopped populating it. Now we have several days of downtime as the entire company scrambles to migrate the data to the new format or reset the new data to the old format. The same thing happens if you want to change something from required to optional. You need to be extremely careful when deploying to production. The actual way to do these changes is add much better ID as an optional field, make sure it's populated in all new data, and update all old data to include much better ID. Then you could make it required without breaking anything. Doesn't sound too complicated, but imagine an actual large system. We would have multiple system components dealing with a single proto. We could take down multiple unrelated parts of our system by adding a single required field. And there's no straightforward way to repair. This exact same thing has happened to Google as well. But what's the fundamental problem? Well, we are bundling what should be two different concerns, parsing and validation. When we are parsing, we are simply taking a blob of bytes that doesn't truly have any meaning and converting it into a meaningful format a proto or a map. For example, you take a string and you parse it into an object by using json.parse. This is the primary use of protobuf. Go from a blob of bytes to a usable data structure. When validating, we check that the properties of the parsed data is as expected. We could check field presence, that a value is in a certain set of values, or in a range. If any of those fail, we exit with an error message. Field presence is what the required property checks. So protobuf is used as a serialization format. But if you use the required property, it hides around the validation inside the parse step. And remember, anytime we want to even inspect our data, we are forced to validate it. Therefore, if you have a well-designed core protocol buffer, Say you model an HTTP request. This would get used by your API endpoint, some application business logic part of the system, and maybe even put into a database or analytics storage. All these require very different parts of the data to be present. For the API endpoint, we expect session cookies, URL, referrer, IP address, browser version, request body, etc. Meanwhile, the business logic probably doesn't need the IP address. The analytics storage definitely doesn't want it because otherwise you will find yourself breaking multiple various privacy laws. But if you build the proto only for the API gateway, you would mark all of the fields as required. So we would need some data for the IP address or use a different proto. 
which let's be honest, us programmers are lazy. We wouldn't do that. So the validation should be an application specific concern and thus migrate protos by only adding optional fields. By doing this, separating parsing and validation, we get the most important property of protobuf via compatibility of different versions of protos. As long as we don't change fields, a proto will always parse correctly no matter what variant of the schema was used to create the proto or what variant was used to read it. But here's the kicker. If you're using Proto Free, none of this matters to you. In Proto Free, they actually remove the required and optional properties, making everything optional, removing validation as an option entirely. This means the proto schema, instead of looking like this, looks like this without the optional all to say you don't need to be scared that required will come and break your systems of course your application validation could still mess you up but that's on you and will be much easier to solve as well thank you for watching and have a nice day